Over the years, I've tested out a lot of different foods and the effect it has on my body. And throughout this process, I found that the common knowledge around a lot of different foods that they might be bad for you or might cause breakouts or bloating, etc., isn't actually true, at least not for everyone, and especially not for me. So systematically over the past five years or so, I've added in and taken out certain foods and experimented with the effect it has on my bloating, my breakouts and body fat percentage. And I found that there's six really surprising foods that I've added back in that had a positive impact on all three of those. Now this is highly individual and each person can have a different response, but I wanna share those six different foods with you so that you could test out to see if it has a positive impact on your bloating, body fat percentage or breakouts. All right guys, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Aud and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. On my channel, I'm typically talking about the science back and holistic methods that you can use to achieve your wellness dreams. So if you have a wellness goal in mind, make sure you subscribe. Okay, so this first one is probably the one that I was the most hesitant about reincorporating into my diet and that's fermented dairy products. Now, I personally didn't really start experiencing breakouts until I was in college. I never really had it throughout high school, but as I was in college, I started to experience some breakouts and this lasted well past college as well. Now, dairy is typically the first thing that most people will suggest to cut out, especially if you are experiencing breakouts. So I'd done that in the past. I wasn't really having any dairy, but I was still experiencing these breakouts. Now, of course, when it comes to other foods, we know that the quality has a really big impact. So of course, organic versus non-organic or GMO versus non-GMO. And with dairy, it's the very same type of situation. So we have grass fed versus conventional or even the usage of antibiotics versus not using antibiotics. This is really going to change the composition of the dairy itself. In fact, there's even research on how just even grass fed can have such a different impact on the composition of dairy versus the conventional grain fed dairy. This information on the quality of dairy paired with the information that we know on insulin's impact on breakouts and the increased production of the androgen or male hormones, as well as protein's really big impact and possible impact on acne and breakouts as well, I decided to test out reincorporating in certain dairy products. And I first started out with just regular cheese, so aged cheese mostly specific and this is excluding butter because you guys know that I've been using butter for a while, but aged cheese was one of the first things I incorporated, which of course is going to be a fermented dairy product. I started here because compared to a lot of the other dairy products, fermented cheeses are going to have some of the lowest amount of lactose, which lactose is that milk sugar. And it's the one thing that seems to be a big problem for a lot of people. It really just depends on if your body has the ability to break down lactose. And that's by using the enzyme called lactase. Now I expected when I first started to have dairy on a consistent basis, just because it'd been so drilled into all of our heads that dairy is such a problem for breakouts that I was just going to get worse breakouts. But a really interesting thing happened where they actually didn't get worse and they even started to get better, which was not the expected outcome. <laughs> Plus I also found that when I was including these dairy products with my various foods, it was also increasing the satiety, which is something that of course we realize if you've been watching my channel for a while is going to happen because dairy products, especially with something like cheese is going to have such a high amount of protein and fat, both of which turn on our satiety hormones of CCK and peptide YY. So in terms of body fat percentage, since we know that satiety is so important for helping to decrease the body fat percentage, it was also helping with that aspect too. Again, not the expected outcome, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so I started to systematically personally try out different types of dairy products. So next thing I started out was Greek yogurt. That works out great. And as you guys know, this is something I like to use as a main protein source for my smoothies now. And of course, heavy cream, which I've used in the past anyway, because it has such a low lactose content and you can use that as a great swap for the keto coffee when you're making an ice version. But the dairy product that seemed to be the one that was just a step too far for me personally was any type of whole milk product. And I'm assuming it's either the unfermented nature or it's the fact that it is a higher lactose containing food. Now there is a bio individuality component to this, which just means each person is going to have a different response. Likely for me personally, I don't have much of that lactase enzyme that my body produces. When I had tested out using consistently the whole milk product, I found that I was getting breakouts from that. So that's where I found my line. And for some people, dairy might not work at all, but you also might be pleasantly surprised to find that dairy actually helps with reducing breakouts because of the protein content and helping to keep your satiety up because of the protein and fat content. All right, the second kind of surprising food is eggs. Eggs, along with
along with dairy are probably some of the most demonized foods in the public, or really rather they're either loved or they're hated. <laughs> and for a while this was mostly due to the very low cholesterol campaign from dietary cholesterol that was going on for about 30 years. And it wasn't until the 2015 Dietary Guidelines for Americans that we actually concluded, oh, the dietary cholesterol actually has zero impact on our blood cholesterol. And now eggs are fine. <laughs> Which if you're curious on how we came to that conclusion and the whole science behind that, I have a really great video that covers this right here. Now, eggs are an amazing source of choline. It's something that's pretty difficult to get a high amount of in our diet if you aren't having eggs or beef liver. Choline is really essential for fat metabolism as well as for brain function. And of course, it's an amazing source of bioavailable proteins or amino acids and certain fats. I've consistently eaten eggs on and off throughout my whole life, but I haven't had them in a high enough amount to really get the benefits or consistently enough to get the benefits, at least in the past. I would maybe have a couple eggs a week here and there just to add it into my salad. But over the past four years or so, I've been using it in an amount that actually would be adequate to get the protein from the eggs itself. And I found that when I include eggs, it's really amazing for my satiety levels. Once I started to actually include it more consistently, again, my body fat percentage was more stable or it even started to decrease because of that satiety level that eggs can provide. Eggs are a really great source of both the fat and the protein that is needed to turn on those satiety hormones. And by feeling satiated, it helped to prevent those sugary type of cravings that would happen if I wasn't satiated. And of course, those sugary cravings would lead to eating foods that definitely would not support my body fat percentage, my bloat or my breakout goals. Now personally, I really like to have eggs almost every day at lunchtime. I have a few different recipes I like to use it with, whether it's a scramble or making some type of breakfast burrito, or like with the adult snack pack recipe that's in the new updated level up guide, which I'll have the details for down in the description below if you want to check that out. All right, the third are homemade fermented vegetables. Now bloating is something else that I've really suffered with ever since college and past college as well. This is why once I came across the migrating motor complex as an amazing tool for decreasing bloating, why I love to share that with you guys so much because it is such an amazing tool for helping decrease bloating. It's something I personally have used in the past and still use to this day to help decrease the bloating response. And to go along with that MMC, I found that even for myself personally and for some of my clients too, adding in fermented vegetables can also be a really great tool for just helping to improve the overall health of the GI tract even further. Now, I've used fermented vegetables on and off that I would just buy from places, but it's only been in the past year or less that I've started to use homemade fermented products. Products. And first of all, way less expensive. Oh my gosh, they can charge a lot for fermented vegetables at grocery stores. And really it should only cost you about a dollar to make. But it's also great because you can have complete control of what you're actually getting for a flavor profile to make sure you like it. I personally like it very spicy, but some people don't. And so you can really have more control on that. And my mom was actually the one who taught me how to make the homemade fermented vegetables. I'll see if I can get her on the channel to have her teach us too. But if you're interested, just let me know in the comments below. All right, the fourth are chia seeds. I mean, first of all, it's an incredible incredible source of fiber. If you have any issues with getting enough fiber into your diet, chia seeds is a really easy way to add it in to boost it. And that fiber helps to feed the good healthy gut bacteria in your colon so that you can foster more of that healthy bacteria as well. Not to mention the inclusion of the omega-3 fatty acids, which are really important for helping to reduce inflammation in the body. And you even get a little bit of protein in there as well. Now, especially with satiety being such an important factor for body fat percentage, weight loss, overall wellness goals, chia seeds are a great addition to help boost that satiety because of all of those various factors. I mean, you guys see me add it into a lot of my breakfast. <laughs> Obviously there's the chia brekkie bowl. There's a lot of my smoothies. I'll even just sprinkle it on top of when I'm making a Greek yogurt bowl. So it's extremely versatile and there are a lot of ways to use it. Okay, number five is high quality beef. I didn't really eat much meat in general when I was younger. I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but I grew up as a vegetarian. My family was just vegetarian at the time. I believe it was for about 10 years or so that they were vegetarian. So I didn't really eat meat until I was a little bit older. And beyond that, I never really got into the habit of eating beef anyway, just because I didn't really eat it when I was younger. But once I did more consistently start to increase beef and incorporate beef, high quality beef into my diet, I noticed a few things. And first, namely that my muscle recovery really improved. I've always been a casual athlete as what I like to describe it. I played volleyball and basketball and soccer and swim. I was even on dance team for a while. And more recently with the focus on strength training and 
walking. I just love exercise. I love challenging my body in a balanced approach as you guys have seen with this video. But I would notice that it was easy for me to feel exhausted after a training. And once I incorporated high quality beef, so grass fed organic beef, I found that my muscle recovery time shortened and my muscle soreness just wasn't as intense. So this likely could be contributed to a multitude of factors. First of all, just making sure that I actually got enough protein into my diet. And this isn't to say that you can't get enough protein from a plant-based source because you absolutely can, especially with something like tempa or lentils as great sources. But that was something I had been using previously. And I found again, that personally for me, that beef was a really great inclusion, high quality beef to help improve my muscle recovery. This is where that bio-individuality can really come into play because I do know that some people do better with plant-based proteins, but others do better with animal-based. So you have to find what works best for your body. Personally, for me, I found that ground beef or just beef in general works very well. Okay, so the last one is my favorite one and it's high quality coffee sources. This was another very counterintuitive one for me because I have had anxiety almost my entire life. The first moment I really can remember having that sensation of anxiety was fourth grade. So I on again, off again, had cut off coffee from my lifestyle in order to just help with my anxiety which made me really sad because I love coffee. As you guys will know, if you follow me on Instagram, you see me post about it all the time. But just like with the beef or with dairy or with plants, any type of food source that we talk about here on the quality mattering, same thing applies for coffee. And I'd never really thought of it that way until I really started to look into the research. And this is when I discovered the mold toxins and the pesticides and the low antioxidant levels that are common in a lot of different coffees, not to mention the potentially inflammatory response you can get from any of these factors. So about three years ago, I really wanted to be able to incorporate coffee into my lifestyle again without having to spur an anxiety attack. So I came across what I could find as the healthiest option for a coffee being organic, mold free, mold toxin free, and also optimized for antioxidants. And this has made all the difference. I can actually drink coffee now, which is life changing. <laughs> In fact, occasionally when I'm maybe out of town and I don't bring any of the coffee with me, I find that I'll have some local coffee and it always makes me feel anxious and I always regret it. <laughs> and even the degree of how someone can respond to poor quality coffee can really range. Again, this goes back to that concept of bio-individuality, just like with lactose, just like with beef, just like with any of the things we talk about, finding what works best for you is really important. But if you're curious about those different factors that I just briefly touched upon on coffee and how they can affect your wellness goals, Goals or potentially affect your wellness goals, depending on how sensitive you are. I recently interviewed the founder of that coffee that I mentioned, Purity Coffee, where he talks about the science and the research behind this. I highly recommend that you check out this video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love the science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. I come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.